Hello everyone, uh, I'm Shoshana of Sepiana, Pediatric Oncologist and the Editor-in-Chief of OncoDaily Medical Journal and I am pleased to welcome you today on OncoDaily. And today it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Niels Eckert, Chief Medical Affairs Officer at Agenus. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, with over three decades of experience in pharmaceutical industry, what would you say has been the most satisfying aspects of your work in the industry and also specifically in oncology? I think the, the most satisfying uh, aspect is to be able to make a difference uh, to patients with cancer. And I've been lucky in, in my career uh, to always end up working with molecules, with drugs that had the potential to make that difference. Oh, that's truly inspiring. And uh, moving uh, forward to recent advancements, what oncology treatments are you most excited about and how do you see them impacting patient care? I think um, over the last decade, we have learned a lot around specifically targeting uh, cancer cells. And today we're uh, moving beyond that. Uh, we're uh, targeting the patient and helping the patient uh, to restore the balance uh, that exists between uh, normal and malignant cells. So you, I, everybody is having cancer cells every day and normally our immune system uh, will take care of them. Uh, if a, a cancer cell escapes that immune surveillance, then cancer generates. So what we are trying today is through uh, encouraging the immune system uh, to recognize cancerous cells mm -hmm. and uh, thereby teaching itself to get rid of these cancer cells uh, continuously and sustained. Yeah, and uh, what is the challenging part of that? To, uh, cr uh, we are working to have immunotherapies, and, uh, but what is the challenging uh, part of uh, that working with immunotherapy and the cancer cells? Uh, how do you see um, and how Agenis addresses that challenges actually? So, about 15 years ago, immuno-oncology has started and uh, it has been a, a true revolution uh, to, to medicine as we understand it today. However, it was uh, restricted uh, to patients that had tumors that were shouting loudly, we're here. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine uh, that, uh, that you get up in the morning and it's dark, the, the light bulb is broken, so you get dressed and you end up with one red sock and one black sock under your black suit, um, everybody sees the red sock because it just stands out yeah. and that's the immunogenic tumor. Nobody remembers the black sock and, and that is the immune silent tumor. Mm -hmm. So we have now found ways to remember the black sock and uh, teach the immune system to recognize the black sock as a target for the immune surveillance. Well, thank you for explaining in that uh, mad matter. I think it's uh, very uh, important uh, to understand. Uh, also, usually uh, in our daily life, uh, we encounter a lot of things that can be uh, used also in oncology as an example, as, uh, as an explanation. And uh, building on that, uh, what trends do you foresee shaping the future of oncology treatment? Uh, so, when I was uh, a young doctor more than 30 years ago, um, I was taught that, you know, once a patient has metastatic disease, um, there is close to nothing you can do for them. You can help them to have a reasonable quality of life for how much life is left. Mm -hmm. Today, this is still true for many cancer patients, uh, fortunately not for all of them. And uh, I hope that maybe another 10 years down the road, um, we'll be able to cure cancer in a lot more patients than we can do that today. Hmm. That's very enlightening. And uh, 
Can you provide insights into recent advancements or breakthroughs in immunotherapy research and developments at the Genus? Uh, so, uh, Genus is a company that's now 30 years old. And uh, um, the focus of the company has always been uh, the immune system and, and how to harness the immune system uh, in the battle against cancer. Now, this has been tried with vaccines, uh, this has been tried with checkpoint inhibitors and, and other uh, immune pathway targeting molecules, uh, and it's also been addressed uh, with cell therapies. Uh, I think where we are today um, and what we expect to see uh, in the coming year or so is uh, to bring an innovative dual checkpoint blockade uh, to patients. Um, it is early, so we have to be measured in, in how we describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have, uh, and this was what attracted me to join Agenis, we have a phase one study, which is a study in patients uh, that had prior multiple treatments. Uh, someone who's got no other options is a patient that, that signs up for a phase one study. And in those patients, uh, the combination of those two molecules has actually uh, resulted in efficacy in nine different indications. Hmm. Uh, and that is, although it is small numbers, uh, it is very powerful. It shows the strength of this approach uh, and uh, it shows that the concept of targeting the patient, having the patient, irrespective of the tumor, uh, is is the right way to go forwards. I see. Thank you for explaining that. And uh, moving from oncology into your personal uh, experience, how you decided to become an oncologist? So I think it was my fate, if you so wish, uh, when I uh, was a lot younger and I had to decide uh, what profession to pick. Um, I had a, an opportunity to go to university to study medicine and I had a second opportunity pretty much at the same time uh, to join uh, what today you would call an IT company um, to you know, start developing information technology, communications, uh, these things that today are all part of our daily life. And what I did is I decided to go and uh, volunteer in a hospital for a couple of weeks mm. uh, and this is where I think I was first confronted um, consciously with cancer patients uh, and, and this is where my journey started. Um, I decided that I want to study medicine. Uh, during my studies I uh, worked in hospitals and somehow I always was drawn uh, towards the, the cancer departments uh, the oncology departments um, and way back it was really a situation that we didn't have a lot to offer for these patients. Yeah. Um, many people just turned a blind eye or a cold shoulder mm -hmm. towards these patients because it was so desperate you didn't really know what to tell them. And uh, I thought you know this there is a need to make this different. Mm -hmm. Uh, and even when I started my career as a doctor, um, we didn't have the modern tools in oncology, uh, but still we could help people to live with their disease and have a good quality of life for whatever time was left. Yeah. And, and this was what has kept going in my life till today. Yeah, that's very motivational. And the last question uh, on a related note, what is your advice to young oncologists? Um, I think, uh, you know, oncology is a fascinating part of medicine. And oncology is science and art at the same time. Uh, but my biggest advice is that people need to be honest with themselves. Uh, not everybody is made to be a good oncologist. Uh, there is a, a lot of suffering that we have to accept and endure. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have uh, people's fate 
touching us every day. Um, and uh, that is going to be part of your life if you choose that part of medicine as your profession. Uh, you know, if you're a gynecologist, you help bringing babies to the world every day. That is a completely different, different story that is joyful, that is bright. Yeah. Uh, in oncology, you're confronted with people dying uh, and, and it is very hard. So, you know, with all the ambition to, you know, make a difference and help patients and bring science forwards, um, it's important to keep the balance and make sure that this is what you can endure for the rest of your life. Yeah, thanks a lot for the advice. I think our young oncologists will um, take uh, into account that. And uh, I would like to thank you for our interview. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for having me. It was our pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onca Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.